between 100 to 94 million years ago in the north of Africa, a dinosaur lived that would ultimately become one of the greatest enigmas of the prehistoric world. To anybody without a prior knowledge of dinosaurs, Spinosaurus aegyptiacus, the subject of today's video, would have resembled nothing living in the modern day, except perhaps an enormous, massively derived crocodile. This, however, only applies to the Spinosaurus we know in 2025, a semi-aquatic, sail-backed piscivore whose true form and lifestyle has eluded paleontologists for years. You may remember Spinosaurus from Jurassic Park 3, when it appeared as a resurrected terrestrial hyperpredator, capable of holding its own against the mighty Tyrannosaurus. But modern discoveries have painted this picture of an already iconic dinosaur. Today, join us as we take you back to Cretaceous North Africa, to the domain of the largest terrestrial piscivore that has ever walked the Earth. Along the way, we'll discover the world in which it lived, the animals it coexisted with, and the paleontologists slowly piecing together the story of one of the greatest biological mysteries in all of natural history. To behold any Spinosaurus fossil currently known to science is to gain an insight into just how massive this dinosaur was. The most recent estimations of the animal's size, based on a 2022 study by Paul Serino and colleagues, place Spinosaurus at a length of around 14 meters from nose to tail. That's longer than Acrocanthosaurus, longer than Carcharodontosaurus, longer than T. rex. That same study also theorized that Spinosaurus could potentially, when fully grown, weigh up to seven tons, as much as a large African elephant. Amongst the dinosaurs that have been discovered and named by paleontologists so far, Spinosaurus stands out as one of the most distinct and unique. Its incredibly long body was balanced by a huge skull at one end and an immense tail at the other. The skull superficially resembled those seen in modern crocodilians and was filled with extremely sharp, conical teeth that could be used for ensnaring and dispatching large fish, while the tail was akin to that of a colossal tadpole. With the tail, the vertebral neural spines were extremely elongated, as were the chevrons, which gave it a fin-like appearance. Perhaps the most striking feature of Spinosaurus, however, was the tall sail formed from its spinal vertebrae, which was thought to have reached between 1.5 to 2 meters alone. The purposes of this dinosaur's physiological features have long been the subject of scientific debate amongst paleontologists, which has led to it being considered among the most difficult to interpret, unpredictable and ever-changing fossils in the eyes of those who study it. Spinosaurus was, as the name might suggest, a spinosaurid theropod, whose relatives include other Mesozoic superstars. Bionyx and Sacomimus are among the most famous amongst the general public, but less well-known genera include Ichthyovenator, Ceratosuchops, Ripperovenator and Protathlitis. Spinosaurs were diverse and widespread across the early Cretaceous and have been found in South America, Europe, Asia and Africa. Africa is where we find ourselves in Spinosaurus's case, specifically in the continent's northern reaches, specifically in fossil sites across Morocco and Egypt. Spinosaurus is one of the star specimens of the Kem Kem group and its remains have been unearthed in Morocco's Ifezouan Formation and Egypt's Bahariya Formation. In the early Cretaceous, the dinosaur may have been widespread across northern Africa and, given what seemed to be adaptations for an aquatic or at least semi-aquatic lifestyle, it is thought to have been a resident of wetlands, coastlines, mangrove forests and river deltas. Spinosaurus paleontological history is one of the most tumultuous and ever-changing in dinosaur history. Egypt's Bahariya formation yielded the first of the dinosaur's fossilized remains 
to German paleontologist Ernst Stromer in 1912. Among the finds were Spinosaurus's iconic dorsal vertebrae, allowing researchers to peer into how unique this animal was right from the very start. Stromer himself would go on to name Spinosaurus Egyptiacus, meaning spine lizard from Egypt, in 1915. Initial depictions of the dinosaur are almost unrecognizable by today's standards. The first reconstructions showed an animal unsuited to a life in wetlands and rivers, but something that resembled an upright, long-legged lizard. The tail dragging on the floor behind it and the neural spines forming a simple, semicircled sail on its back. Strummer's finds were taken to Munich's Museum of Paleontology once the animal was formally described and named, where they would remain up until the outbreak of World War II. In what would prove to be one of the most gutting losses in all of paleontology, Stromer's finds were destroyed in 1944 when British bombers assaulted the city, leveling much of the museum and destroying the Spinosaurus specimen within. Stromer had made drawings of the fossils when he discovered them, and they had been formally described, but perhaps many of the issues paleontologists now face when reconstructing Spinosaurus could have been avoided if the museum wasn't destroyed in the war. For many years, following their discovery, these would be the only known examples of fossil material belonging to Spinosaurus. Stromer's photographs and illustrations of the Spinosaurus fossils were lost to the archives until 2000. And when they were recovered, paleontologists started to note that, based upon more current reconstructions of dinosaurs, the early reconstructions of the dinosaur were likely very inaccurate. Spinosaurus soon began to be reconstructed in mirror with other large theropods known at the time, which is where the famous Jurassic Park thread model comes into the public eye. Then, a 2014 reconstruction started to shake things up for an already unusual species. It was theorized that Spinosaurus's center of gravity would have shifted too far forward for it to reliably walk on two legs. And so, for a few years, quadrupedal models were examined. This has, of course, since been rejected. Then, in 2020, the entire species was flipped on its head once more. Upon the discovery of additional fossil material, Nizar Ibrahim was able to determine the true form of the dinosaur's paddle-like tail and inferred a life characterized by spending time not just around, but in the water. It was soon discovered that the dinosaur was able to balance itself on two legs and that it potentially was an adept swimmer, sailing through the swamps and rivers of ancient North Africa, pursuing large fish as it went. Ibrahim suggested that this animal may have been capable of diving, submerging itself in the water to pursue its prey. This revolutionized the way the world saw Spinosaurids, and a wave of paleo art and representation in the media came flooding in. However, Spinosaurus's story wasn't complete just yet. In 2022, when Paul Serino re-examined the 2020 remains described by Nizar Ibrahim, he determined that Spinosaurus may not have been an adept diver. Instead, the dinosaur's buoyant bones may have prevented it from diving after prey, which meant that it would have needed to hunt from the land. This led to the theory that Spinosaurus essentially lived its life like a massive reptilian heron, wading in relatively shallow water, or by the water's edge, before launching its massive jaws towards large fish who swam too close. Any modern Spinosaurus study tends to be met with controversial responses in the amateur paleontological community, and this was no exception. Whether or not Spinosaurus was for certain an aquatic pursuit predator, or if it was indeed a wader, remains to be seen. What we do know is that the animal was both gigantic and a very capable hunter of large aquatic animals. Several other Spinosaurids, such as Baryonyx and Suchomimus, show excellent adaptations of hunting fish around the water's edge. And so, with Spinosaurus's paddle-like tail, long curved claws and slender snout, a very similar lifestyle can be inferred. 
What scientists cannot determine is whether the dinosaur hunted from the water's edge or the shallows, like an egret or heron, or if it was an active pursuit predator that entered the water and dived to obtain its piscine prey, due to the similarities of Spinosaurus with modern crocodiles clashing with its clear bipedal theropod morphology, both arguments face criticism and are backed with support in modern times. If the wading heron-like hypothesis proves to be true, then Spinosaurus would have loomed over the water, potentially motionless, as it waited for prey to pass close enough to strike. Then, when the time was right, the dinosaur would have launched its jaws, lined with sharp conical teeth, into the water to ensnare and lift its prey. An animal of Spinosaurus's size would have demanded a diet of very large aquatic animals, and as such, its claws likely played a part in killing the prey once it had been hauled up onto the riverbank or shore. Paleontologists are also continuing to decide on the exact function of Spinosaurus's iconic sail. Some have suggested that the sail could have been bigger in males than it was in females, and, as such, may have been a display tool adorned with patterns or colours that helped them breed when the season arrived. Others argue that, like the Permian synapsids, such as Dimetrodon, that boasted similar sails, Spinosaurus would have utilised its sail in thermoregulation. This would involve soaking up the sun's rays with a wealth of blood vessels to warm the dinosaur when it needed, although this would imply that Spinosaurus was partly cold-blooded. Jan Gimsa and colleagues in 2015 suggested that Spinosaurus's sail could be an example of convergent evolution with modern sailfish and may have made the animal more hydrodynamic when moving through the water. This, of course, relies upon the idea that Spinosaurus was a diver, and the theory was expanded by suggesting that the dinosaur used its tail to help herd fish into a compact, enclosed area so it could feed more easily. Other diving-dependent theories state that Spinosaurus's long, paddle-like tail could have been flicked quickly in the water in a similar manner to the hunting strategy employed by a modern thresher shark, or that the tail and neck could be slapped against the water to corral and corner prey. These theories are supported by the overall rectangular shape of Spinosaurus's sail, which may have attached impressively large muscles to allow the predator to move with force. Spinosaurus seemed to have been capable of semi-aquatic locomotion from a very early age, as evidenced by an ungual phalanx bone discovered in 1999 that may belong to a young juvenile. The Spinosaurus in question was a tiny fraction of its adult size, thought to measure just 1.7 meters from nose to tail when contrasted against the phalanxes of adults. Perhaps, like some crocodiles, the young would have stayed close to the adults until they were able to fend for themselves. The Chem Chem group's formations were not safe places, as we will soon see. Spinosaurus may have been common across North Africa, but its overall environment is not as well known as, say, Tyrannosaurus's. As the dinosaur may have been so widespread, it can become hard for paleontologists to pin down habitats that may have extended across a location from A to B, which were, in Spinosaurus' case, the Afizuan Formation in Morocco, through to the Bahariya Formation of Egypt. This may mean that Spinosaurus was present across the entire North African coast, making it a very widespread species. In the Bahariya Formation, which is better understood than the Moroccan sites, Spinosaurus likely inhabited coastal mangrove forests and river deltas. Those deltas would have given way to wooded floodplains that harboured all kinds of early Cretaceous creatures. Spinosaurus's prey came largely in the form of fish, and those that lived in the rivers of early Cretaceous North Africa needed to be large to defend themselves against, or sustain, Spinosaurus. For years, the most likely candidate for Spinosaurus's favoured prey is the giant saw-skate Onchopristis, 
a huge cartilaginous fish resembling both a sawfish and a ray that could potentially have reached eight meters in length. Its rostrum was armed with sharp barbs that could have helped it defend itself from attack and to stun its own prey. Also present here were species of Morsonia, a gigantic relative of the modern Coulacanth that was suited to living amongst the shallow mangroves. Again, this fish may have been targeted by Spinosaurus, being capable of growing to 5.3 meters in length. Additionally, measuring in at three meters long, was Boetius, a giant beach ear. Modern beach ears are known to be rather aggressive fish, and so may have put up quite a fight if they found themselves between the jaws of a giant theropod. On land, a whole other world awaited. The top predators on the floodplains and in the forests were the famed Carcharodontosaurus and the slightly smaller Bahariasaurus. Carcharodontosaurus's relatives, the Carcharodontosaurids, would find themselves as some of the most widespread and largest groups of carnivores across the early Cretaceous and were likely adapted to hunting the mighty long-necked sauropods. In Spinosaurus's domain, Carcharodontosaurus was probably suited to hunting the Titanosaurus, Egyptosaurus and Paralytitan, but would have struggled hunting fully grown, healthy adults. Carcharodontosaurus and Spinosaurus most likely stayed out of each other's way, as the pair of them depended on different habitats within the same formation. Spinosaurus individuals living in river deltas may have occasionally needed to fend off Carcharodontosauruses coming down for a drink if they perceived them as a threat. Of course, these animals are just the largest and most charismatic of the lands in which Spinosaurus thrived. Beneath the giant's feet would have been a whole world of crocodilomorphs, smaller fishes and early mammals, while pterosaurs flew overhead. Some paleontologists have suggested that, when food was scarce, Spinosaurus may even have predated upon pterosaurs that were fishing in and around its waters, and may have opportunistically snatched smaller terrestrial species from the undergrowth when it wasn't fishing. While paleontologists now have a much clearer image of what this wonder of the natural world looked like in life, there are still many questions that have gone left unanswered. Did Spinosaurus dive for its prey or wade like a heron? Are the current reconstructions of the animal exactly right or will additional fossil content prove them wrong once again? Perhaps, if the original Munich specimen wasn't destroyed, we would have more information about this animal on record than we do now. All we can do is wait and see what gets uncovered next.